Oh, all right. I apologize for that. Um, let us reestablish things here. Hold on. Uh, there we go. We're going to pretend that never happened. Right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Here we go. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for your patience. I'm really sorry about that. You know, anytime you have any kind of system change, there's always the, the, these little hiccups. So I apologize. I'm going to start the live stream again on Facebook. Give me just a moment. Here we go again. <laughs> okay, wonderful. All right, so we are here today to talk about Discord. And Discord is something fairly new to me. I only heard about it in for the first time in January 2020, uh, right before the pandemic started. And I heard about it from a group of young people. Uh, I was giving a guest lecture to a class of MFA students. We were talking about platform. And one of the students asked, do you think that Discord could be used as a platform building tool? And I said, I have never heard of Discord. I'm going to have to look that up. Um, but the students did explain it to me roughly what it was, um, although I didn't quite grasp it. They were using it primarily for gaming. And since I'm not a big video game player, at least not today, um, you know, I didn't see when I downloaded it, I didn't see a whole lot of immediate use for myself. And it was also hard to find other people on Discord. I, it was like being in an empty room. And so I quickly kind of put it away and I didn't open it again for quite some time. In fact, not really until spring of 2021. Now, when I first mentioned Discord to folks in my newsletter, so I have a free newsletter called Electric Speed, I had a reader respond and say, please stop promoting Discord. It is the epicenter of where secret groups organize homophobic, Nazi, and other disruptive attacks on schools, religious organizations, and 12-step groups. Uh, the management of and investors in Discord are doing nothing to stop this harassment. Um, so I didn't get a lot of these messages. In fact, I only got the one. Um, but it did give me pause, and I did a little bit of research. And certainly Discord, like many other social networks or platforms, can be used for bad purposes by bad people. Um, however, I don't know, I don't think it's accurate to say that Discord has done nothing. In fact, they have done quite a bit to um, ameliorate the problems of the platform. And so I think at this point, it is probably neither any better nor any worse than other social media platforms. Um, as with all online tools, they can be misused and um, people who want to do bad things may in fact use them. That's just the nature of these tools. So I just want to, in you know, if any of you have heard, you know, the negative things about Discord, I just wanted to get that out of the way up front. Um, generally, my experience since using it more intensively has been very positive, And I haven't had this sort of negative response, in fact, uh, since my first mention of it in my newsletter, which has uh, been about a year and a half ago. Now, one of the ways that I came to understand Discord when I started using it, it really reminded me of the early days of IRC, uh, which was a, a text-based chat uh, application that you know you could drop in on all sorts of communities, usually special interest communities, discussing various things of interest to them. And you would have a handle um, that was usually pretty uh, creative or clever or cutesy. It was very anonymous. Very few people went by their real name there. Uh, and all sorts of crazy things happened on IRC. I, as a young high school student and college student, I really enjoyed it. Um, but then as soon as 
you know, the World Wide Web and um, social media came around, you know, IRC had less and less reason for being. But Discord feels like the new version in some regards of IRC. Uh, so you'll even see that it, it kind of, you know, the aesthetic, if if you use the dark version of Discord, I, I don't, I use the light version. It's, you know, a lot of the design and functionality even, you know, looks quite similar if I toggle back and forth between these. So it's a, to me, it's a very pretty version of IRC with a lot more functionality and bells and whistles because there there is um, there are audio chatting capabilities there's video capabilities uh, although at this point personally I have only used it for text-based chat so it's it's really a way for groups of people to come together for various reasons or purposes um, and I would consider them special interest communities, uh, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Uh, Joanne asks if I can explain why it got the name Discord, which you know sounds maybe um, like maybe it's not up to any good. <laughs> it kind of indicates the negative reputation I referenced earlier. I don't know. Um, there's a really funny advertisement for Discord that the people at Discord made. It features Danny DeVito. I would strongly recommend watching this video. Um, not that it actually explains Discord, but it's entertaining and it shows what the platform aspires to be, what it would like to be for a more general audience outside of the gaming audience, which is, I think, why Danny DeVito is the star of this commercial, because he stands in for the every man who has no idea what is going on with Discord. And at the very end of the commercial, he, say, he says something, you know what Discord means, right? <laughs> it does not mean, you know, coming together in harmony, which is kind of what the commercial portrays, coming together in, in good spirits. And so, yeah, I don't know where the name came from. I haven't researched it, but I'm sure there's some article out there that explains it. OK, so let me talk about some of the fundamental qualities of Discord that I think really make it special or set it apart from other social media that you may be using. First of all, it's private, or that's a lot of the intention behind it is to retain privacy. And that has a drawback if you're new to the platform and that it makes it tougher to find your people. So when I first turned up on the Discord platform, you know, I like I said, I was in an empty room by myself. And it's not that easy to find other communities there unless you already know they exist, like someone told you they exist, or you found someone discussing it online somewhere, or someone invites you specifically with a link. It's not like Facebook where you can try to browse groups, at least the groups that haven't been made secret. Um, so it, it can be a little frustrating in that sense if you're just starting out. But once you kind of get over that hump, um, you're fine. Like it's like the privacy issue starts to become a huge bonus. Um, the other issue that I think is liberating or the other quality of Discord that I think is liberating is that you don't have a profile to maintain. You know, there aren't any marketing best practices here for maintaining your profile or having followers or friends. There, I mean, you can have friends on Discord, but that that is totally outside the point of it. It's really just more for private chatting back and forth. No one can see how many friends you have or how many followers you have on Discord. It's just there's no status anxiety connected to how big you are. It's really community driven in that respect. And it's also more intimate and it's really meant to focus on conversations between people. And it's very, for me, it's very of the moment. Um, it's not something that you would feel compelled to like consume everything on there, or it's kind of a drop in and chat, you know, when you feel like it, like you're taking a break from writing, or maybe there's some specific thing, like a writing sprint you're going to do with some friends uh, together on discord. So for me, all of these qualities, when you add them together, make discord a less toxic place currently, I think, than some social media sites. And that's why I have been very interested in using it and um, maybe even using it as a replacement for other types of social media engagement. 
uh, Maddie mentions that she finds the drop in and chat aspect uh, that makes it hard to use because some are trying to use Discord as an information sharing platform. Um, yeah, so that would be frustrating. Like if you, I, for instance, I belong to a Discord community called Substack Writers Unite. And if I went on there to try and learn best practices for using Substack, boy, that that would not be great. Like it is, it is just, a, it, it would be like walking into a cocktail party or into some sort of group conversation that has been going on for hours and hours and expecting someone to hand you the best practices of, you know, what they're talking about. That's not, at least so far in my experience, that's not really how it functions. It really truly is social. Um, although certainly if you pose questions to people in that, in that community or group, you could probably get pointed to some of the best practices uh, that you're looking for. So yeah, it is not, um, I wouldn't consider it necessarily a, like a first choice learning tool. It really is for engaging with other people. So let me talk about some of the most common use cases that are out there very broadly, and then we're gonna get more narrow and talk about the writing community. Number one use, I think by far, is chat for gamers. So this is really how the platform took off. Uh, gamers who want to be able to talk to each other, chat with each other while they're playing a game together. Um, as I said, I'm not a big video gamer. I can't really tell you much about this use, um, but definitely you're gonna hear it a lot in those communities and, and in those contexts. For younger people, you'll also find that Discord can be used for classes as uh, information sharing, communication, networking, you know, people setting up group work or trading notes or asking the professor questions, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, if you have kids, uh, maybe you know Discord because of their gaming use or because of the classroom use. And I've, I've seen um, Discord used by professors to create like an official communication hub. But I've also seen another Discord used by students where the professor is not involved, where they can just have a private area for themselves. So it, get, it gets used in both ways. It's pretty interesting, uh, the dynamics of that. I also see Discord used for conferences. So like if you attend a, a big writing conference, uh, you know, especially next year, maybe as the pandemic um, doesn't uh, prevent in-person gatherings, let's hope, knock on wood, you'll see that these uh, Discord back channels develop either hosted by the conference itself or maybe um, run by a participant who's very enthusiastic and eager to facilitate that networking. It's very similar to what you see now with Facebook groups um, or Facebook event pages or other ways that conferences try to set up a way for people to communicate and interact with each other before and after the conference. So, you know, to this extent, you know, Discord makes sense to fulfill this role if you're already using Discord. I think one of the problems right now for whether it's a conference or any sort of group that wants to use it is that not everyone has bought into using Discord. It's become this, God, it, another place that I have to go and check, um, which I understand because we've all got that burden of I'm trying to keep up on Facebook and I'm trying to keep up on Twitter and Instagram and TikTok and whatever. Uh, I really don't want to add another thing to the mix. Um, but as I've been alluding to, I think it may end up replacing some of these other networks and it may become a little more natural for us to dip in and out of discord if it does take off as a more general mass market uh, platform i think it's on its way but it's not quite there yet i've seen some entrepreneurs businesses i have colleagues who have have their eye on discord as a replacement for slack um, now, I've never used Slack, so I can't comment on whether this is a good idea or not. Um, but for those who don't know, Slack is used often as an email replacement for, for business use. Uh, I think Slack is quite expensive uh, if you're using it intensively. Um, again, I don't use it, so it's hard for me to comment all that knowledgeably. But I do know of a, you know at least one colleague who 
is looking at Discord and maybe is now using Discord instead of Slack. <laughs> Maddie mentioned Slack is almost as bad a name as Discord. Indeed, I don't know how these names get invented. All right, so let me narrow things down a little bit and talk about how creators like you and me are using Discord. Well, I think for journalists, writers, uh, people who are regularly producing content, especially subscription content, you will find Discord servers set up or communities set up to reward the people who are paying. So to reward the patrons, the, the paid subscribers, it's a perk. Um, if you subscribe, you get to join my Discord community. And this is how I started looking at it more seriously is when I saw a group of about eight, nine or 10 email newsletter writers who are using Substack. They created something called Side Channel. Uh, you'll see here, it's called a new community for platformer subscribers. But uh, again, this was like eight or nine or maybe even 10 newsletter writers who created a, a Discord community together because they felt like they would be better banding together. It would provide more interest for their subscribers. Like there was a lot of crossover interest area there. Notice they no, they never mentioned Discord in this announcement. Um, it's kind of uh, buried that they're using Discord for this purpose. You know, back several years ago, it would have been more common to have a private Facebook group, something like that. But Discord is what they're using. And Discord has, you know, like I mentioned, some of this interesting multimedia capability where when they launched this uh, perk for subscribers, they also had a live Q&A with Mark Zuckerberg of Facebook, uh, where if, you know, you were part of their uh, their subscribership, you would have special access to this live event in a way that no one else would. So that was a pretty creative use. Although I don't, I have seen Casey Newton, this particular newsletter writer has updated, you know, after a year of, of this Substack experiment that he's run, it's gone fairly well, but they're not seeing a whole lot of use of the Discord community. Uh, we're going to come back to that later and talk about why that might be. Uh, Carrie asks, who owns Discord? That's a good question. Uh, I don't know. I think it's it's still in that startup phase. So I think it has venture capital funding. Uh, it's, it's still private. So I haven't looked into the background of who are the founders and who are the venture capital investors, but it's in that regard, it would be similar to, you know, Substack, like they're venture capital driven and they have a set of owners, you know, or founders who own equity uh, in the company. So back to how are creators using this so that the patron or subscriber perks is one thing that's happening. Another is fan communities. So for instance, here's uh, uh, Scott C. I'm blanking on his full name, but he is someone who does illustrated works. As you can see, incredible artwork here. If you go to his website, his discord server is for people who are really fans of his artwork and trade the artwork and do fan inspired artwork. And so it gives those people a way to really engage with their passion for his art and creating more of the art. If you're familiar with um, Gary V, uh, the guy who seems to be a big deal uh, across all of social media, has been for many years now, um, he launched an NFT project, uh, which that's more complicated than we want to get into today, um, that is supported by a Discord community. So this is a, a pretty interesting use because it's only people who are involved with this particular NFT project that are on the Discord talking about their participation in this and I guess you know trading tips or looking at what each other's doing probably very similar to the Substack Writers Unite community that I'm a part of. You'll also find Discord servers used for very specific parties and events. So, you know, any virtual event that you might run on Zoom or a Facebook Live or a YouTube Live, you could consider Discord as yet another platform for running such an event. 
And we come to one of my reasons or my interest areas here. I think that for some people, Discord represents a really good way to replace Facebook activity, specifically Facebook groups. So for my part, I run a couple Facebook groups. One of them is the business of being a writer, which anyone can join. Uh, it's closely tied to my book uh, of the same name. And then I also have a private group for a class that I've run in the past for on query letters. So, you know, I, I, over the years, and I think this is true of a lot of people, I have become less enamored of Facebook and I really don't like checking it. And I don't use it much for personal uh, reasons any longer. It's strictly there. Uh, I keep it going to maintain the business and to maintain outreach because so many people still use Facebook. Um, but, you know, <laughs> I would really like to transition away from it. Uh, and I, I, you know, I would not be surprised if a year from now, you know, if we're having a conversation, I talk about the day I closed down my Facebook group and told people, if you want to engage with me, here's the Discord link. I, I'm getting closer to that decision every day. All right, so I mentioned earlier that the this was Casey Newton and his side channel project, which he banded together with these other newsletter writers. It didn't necessarily go so well, like it didn't have very high engagement. And I think one of the reasons that could be is that there wasn't a particular purpose in mind other than providing a perk for people. But once people joined the server or the community, you know, what were they supposed to do there? Just talk amongst themselves? I mean, there's eight or 10 newsletter, uh, newsletter writers affiliated with this. Do you really want to talk with those people who subscribe to someone else's newsletter? Like, what is the common purpose these people have? And I think that is likely why it kind of maybe is just flatlining or it maybe not, not a particularly interesting a way for people to engage with them. There was a Twitter thread recently by this gentleman, Stu Fortier, and he it is a really great Twitter thread on building communities. And he starts by saying, why should people keep coming back to this community you've created? In other words, what is the purpose of the community? And he defines it further by saying, a purpose is the primary value that members get by participating in the community. It's specific not fuzzy. So AA's purpose, get you sober. CrossFit's purpose, make you fit. TED's purpose, amplify important ideas. But most communities never define their purpose. They only pick a category, like we're a community of designers. Designers are a category. That's not a purpose. So a purpose is a super specific reason a community gathers. And this is, I, you know, failed this test on so many levels with what I've done on Facebook and, and some other experiments. Um, you know, sometimes we use ourselves and our books as purposes, but that's a very like self-interested purpose. <laughs> it's not necessarily our audience's purpose to gather around a book. I mean, some, yes, like really big books, like um, trying to think uh, that the artist's way would be an example. Like, yes, there are communities that gather around the artist's way to practice the methods that are prescribed in that book to gather around the morning, to gather during the morning pages, to put into practice the principles in that book. So that book works as a purpose for a community. You know, the business of being a writer, eh, not really. Uh, I would have to find a stronger purpose if, you know, if I really want to have something effective. Um, so every Every writer or creator also has to go through this exercise and think about what is it that I want people to do in the right, like in the, in my very specific niche in the writing and publishing niche, you know, why do people most often come together? Usually to participate in writing contests or sprints like national novel writing month is the huge one where people gather for a particular purpose. There are of course, communities and discords organized for that purpose. People love to gather around uh, daily writing practices, like responding to prompts. So, you know, getting writing done is a 
big purpose for uh, the writing community. There are others. Um, there are people who work together on platform. There are people who work together to, to sell and market books, uh, to collaborate on marketing and promotion. And so, you know, again, this is just my little neck of the woods. Each of you as writers, you'll have different topics or categories, fields that you're working in, and you have to think what could draw people together where they would really get some value out of having conversations with each other and working towards that common goal. So here's, here's my list of what often brings people together. Um, as I said, National Novel, Novel Writing Month is a classic. Any sort of writing sprint activity, writing prompts, writing competitions, finding beta readers or critique partners, the marketing collaborations, learning a new tool or software. Uh, like on Facebook right now, I recently joined a group of people trying to learn the Atticus software, which is a new book formatting software. Uh, people gather around trying to learn Scrivener, trying to learn Facebook ads, trying to learn Amazon ads. People who take a class together will, will form communities um, in high school and college and you know, as adult students. So the, these are all really good baby steps. Like if you want to engage with Discord in any way before starting your own community on Discord, you may want to try and find one that is maybe attached to a purpose that you already have and you want to meet others who have that same purpose. If you would like to find some of those writing discords right off the bat, there's a really wonderful post by Trudy Skies. She's a fantasy writer. She has an August 31, 2019 blog post. It's still relevant for anyone looking at Discord today. It's how I found some of my first communities to join, including a Discord server specific to self-publishing authors, which is an excellent one uh, if you do self-publish. I'll show you that in just a minute, in fact. All right, so that brings us to um, a little bit of a live demonstration of Discord. So I'll, I'll just give you a little bit of a tour, what it looks like to get you familiar with the interface, what to expect, what I've learned. Please keep in mind, I, I still consider myself very much beginner level with all of this. Um, I, I have not like achieved liftoff with any of my Discord communities at this point. I haven't put in that much time. I'm still very much in the experiment phase. Um, but I do, of course, like to encourage writers to experiment with these tools, get comfortable with them. And I think I have, I just have a gut feeling like this one is going to be around uh, for a while. And, you know, if Facebook keeps going in the direction it's going in, I think more people will be leaving it. And Discord is by far the best alternative that I've seen. All right. So I am going to start sharing my brow or my Discord. Hold on. I'm just going to check the Q&A in the chat. Um, Maddie mentions, I struggle to attract patrons to my Patreon subscription and offering the type of exclusive access that Discord provides would, would be something, but I don't believe the demographic I'm going for would be comfortable there. Um, Facebook is more intuitive, I believe. And yes, that's definitely going to be a sticking point if your demographic is, say, beyond the age of, I don't know, 40? maybe even 30, I don't, I mean, it's definitely, it's perceived as a young person's tool, but I, it shouldn't be like, there is nothing about Discord that strikes me as you have to be young to use it. It's just a new platform. And some of us are resistant to adding a new technology to our lives. But I think once you, once you can give people some specific steps to take or a specific reason to give it a shot, like an event or a writing sprint, I think you'll find that people may be able to make the transition really well, but I totally agree. It is it is a struggle sometimes to get people to try something new and some will not go there with you, unfortunately. All right, so I am going to share Discord. If I can please come up. Uh, give me just a second. There, where? There we go. Right, so you should now see um, one of my Discord servers. I have two, um, but before I, I get into that, let me just kind of explain to you the screen that you're seeing. 
Um, when you first join Discord, you're likely going to end up on some sort of screen that looks like this if you don't belong to any communities yet. So it'll be a very blank slate sort of environment. Um, it may say it's quiet for now because you don't you know, have any friends yet on Discord. Now, along the left-hand side of the window here, you're gonna see various icons. These are called Discord servers. I like to call them communities, servers, a little bit of a technical term. It's a little bit intimidating for people who, you know, think, how could I, how do you set up a server? That sounds really complicated. Um, it's no more complicated than setting up a Facebook group, I promise you. But this server is what they get called in Discord. And it's just, it's different communities of people that you now have access to. But when you start using Discord, you're not going to have anything. You're just going to have this home screen um, and, and no friends. So what you need to do is start joining some servers in order to see some activity. And that Trudy Skies post that I shared with you earlier will start giving you some, some communities to join. The other thing you're going to see is people that you are friends with and your direct messages with them. So you'll see that I've already got quite a few direct message threads going on here. This is the same as any other social media platform. You have these private messages that you share with people. And so this is just giving you, um, you know, access to those. On the right-hand side, this isn't gonna populate until we start getting into the servers. You'll notice that down here, this is my profile. It's just my name and picture. There's really nothing more to a Discord profile than your name and picture. That's kind of it. Um, and I, I, I find that refreshing. Okay, so let's look at a server. We're gonna start by looking at my general server, which serves no purpose whatsoever other than to offer my newsletter subscribers a place to chat, which is not a great purpose. So please, you know, this is just my experiment. Um, what you'll notice now is that we've got various chat rooms essentially associated with my server and the server name is my name, Jane Friedman. So there's a welcome area. There's an area called electric speed. That's the name of my free newsletter. There's a publishing Q and a area. There's a self promo area. If people want to self promote their stuff, and then I also have a private area that's locked down that only very specific people can see. Um, people that I teach with, I've got a private area for them where we uh, share information back and forth. So all of this is flexible. Like I created this myself. You get to create whatever structure you want. Um, every category and every subcategory I created and each of them have their own permissions and descriptions associated with them. So when you first start, there's not gonna be anything here on the left side. When you start, if you start your own server, there will be nothing here and you'll have to start building it out and thinking through what, what will people do here. If you have a server that is, is basically public, like anyone could potentially join it, uh, Discord's gonna suggest that you have some rules set. And so, you know, I, this is very similar to Facebook group rules that you would create. So I've got that sitting here for people to check the rules when they join. There's also a section here for moderator only. So in your community, just as again, in Facebook, you can have, you have certain people with moderator permissions. And so there's a very specific area that's only for moderation, uh, information between you and the moderators. And also you get announcements from Discord here about what's going on with updates to the technology. I have an area where people can introduce themselves if they're new. So when you first join someone's Discord server, you are announced. It's like entering a party and someone standing at the front of the room says, and now, um, you know, Angela Dale has entered the room, you know, and so there is this, there's this announcement and it changed, you know, it, it, the nature of the announcement changes every time, you know, here it says, join the party, everyone welcome, just slid into the server, 
we hope you brought pizza. Um, and so these are automated welcome messages and you can modify them if you want. I just left, I left them as they are. And so it just helps you see when someone new joins. Um, and then you can, you can welcome them if you like. And you can see that this is all dated. It's reverse chronology. So if we scroll back to the very beginning, it will take some time. You can see the very first one was uh, July 22. Um, so other than this, you don't necessarily, you know, you don't necessarily have a, a full accounting of who's there aside from the right hand panel. So here on the right hand side, what we're seeing are all of the people who have joined this server who are online or offline. So we've got myself, I'm an admin. We've got Mary Cole, who's an expert. She's an instructor who teaches with me. That's why she has this designation. I gave it to her. And then we have online. So a, a range of people who are online and it's green, meaning they're active right now. That means you know they're away from their desk or not actively using Discord. And then we have 202 people who are offline. So that gives you a sense of how many people at any, you know, at any time have ever jumped on to your server community? I've got about 215 or so at this point. But again, we're not counting, right? This isn't about the numbers, but it kind of gives you a sense. The other area I set up right away is called the daily chat area. This is an area that you will find associated with most servers. And it's just a place for people to talk about whatever, you know, it's not timely. It's not on a particular topic. It's just whatever goes. Um, and there we've got Maddie listening uh, to my Sunday sermon to figure out discord. Thank you for giving us that live demo. So when someone posts a message, you can reply. You can add a reaction. I'll add a reaction. Um, we'll do a little whale. There we go. And so now we've got a little reaction. It says that Jane Friedman reacted with a whale. Um, and so it just it just keeps on spooling out forever and forever and forever like that. Um, I also have a space here for suggestions. So if people want to suggest how I should set up the server, they can do that here. And I've found that on Discord, people tell you right away what they want. It's very unlike other places I interact online. People will say, you need this. You should set up that. Why don't you enable blah, blah, blah. Um, they can be very bossy, but I like that. I like being told what people are looking for. Um, so for those of you here with me in the Zoom, I'm going to go ahead and copy an invite link. If you would like to go ahead and jump in with me, you're welcome to do that. So that link is now in the Zoom chat. That invite will be good for seven days. Um, so you'll notice what I did here is this, all of my settings for this server, the Jane Friedman server, are hiding under this carrot menu. And you can invite people using a link. So it's very easy. The link can expire or it can have other qualities associated with it. It's really customizable. It's very cool, I think. It, it helps with the privacy issues. Okay. So the other areas I have set up here are more specific to what I think I'm doing on Discord. <laughs> um, so there are, there are certain features in my email newsletter, Electric Speed, uh, asking people to suggest things. So I have very specific areas for people to discuss, like uh, health and fitness apps, uh, tools for Twitter, a general recommendation place for tools. I also set up publishing Q and A, just thinking that, you know, if I do turn off the Facebook group, people need a place to ask questions and engage with me. And so we've got, there's been some action here, not much, but, but some. There's also self promo areas where people can drop links to their books, to their social media, to their email newsletters. Uh, this was by request. I didn't, nor I didn't, set up my server to have a self-promotion area, but that was one of the first requests that came through. So I added it. So that's the extent of the Jane Friedman server. I see that there's someone else who's, ah, we've got a whole bunch of people who've, uh, I think, oh wait, no, I'm way back in the history. Hold on. Ah, we've got 
one person who just hopped in. There's uh, Tapio King of the Woods. So wonderful. Hello. It's good to see you. All right. Um, Maddie says, one of the issues I have with Discord is that I'll see the red circle with a number, which I think indicates messages directed to me, but I have a heck of a time finding those messages. Yeah, so it's um, the notification system for Discord is not necessarily like other social media platforms you use. Um, and I think it, it's just something you will eventually get used to. I, normally, if you were mentioned specifically, like if someone uses your handle, um, like if I say, hi, Maddie, um, you should get some sort, you should get some sort of a, um, like a red number or, you know, something that appears like on the app. Um, see that little number one up here. That's, that tells me there's something specific that I need to act on. It's probably someone making a friend request. So usually you will see that little red number come up when someone is speaking to you directly or there's a specific response. But I admit it can be a little hard to navigate and figure out where that's occurring. You'll also notice um, there are these tiny little black marks. See, the, see those tiny little black marks on the left hand next to the server? It's really super subtle, like really subtle. <laughs> you, might, you might think that's just a normal design feature. But what it's doing is telling you there's new stuff you haven't read. It's not pertaining to you. It just means there are new posts. So like if I click around on these, you'll notice the black mark will eventually, well, it should go away if I scroll to the end of the messages, maybe. But notice now the black marks appear in these different message threads. Um, so let me see if I can get this to go away so you can see the effect. Um, it's, but it's going to make me scroll through everything though, but I think it's worth it for you to see what happens when I do that. So you notice that the black marks are starting to disappear as I check out new activity. Um, and I haven't looked at some of these servers for a while. Okay, there we go. All right. So now all of the little black dots are gone. And if I click away, now you see the black dot is gone from the left here. So that's the system of letting you know that there's stuff going on that maybe you want to look at. But it only turns red if you specifically are mentioned, or that's how I understand it. Now you'll notice for Jane Friedman, there's nothing sitting there right now. So there's nothing for me to look at. But of course, I can go in at any time and take a look. Um, I have another server set up for the hot sheet. This is my paid newsletter. Uh, the only way you can join this is if you're a subscriber, the link is in the, the issues that I send out via email. Uh, this has been okay. Um, you know, not, I wouldn't say amazing in terms of engagement, but I like having it because the people who are, you know, really, really interested in the newsletter do sometimes drop in here and ask questions or mention things that I think are interesting and helpful to me. Now, something I did different with the hot sheet server is that I introduced roles. So this is a bit of advanced functionality. I wouldn't necessarily recommend starting off with this because it took me a while to set up and understand. But essentially, I have a system where you can assign yourself a role if you wish so that people know when you're on the server what sort of author you are or who, what your background is. So you can assign yourself a role simply by clicking the icon that matches the description. So if I'm an indie author who self-publishes and I want to be identified as that on this server only, on the Hotsheet server, I can click I, and that's how I will be identified over here on the right-hand side. So you'll see here in the Hotsheet server, we've got the admins, we've got an indie author, um, we've got an emerging author, we've got a published author, we've got a distributor, and then we have people online who have not yet assigned themselves roles, which is fine. This is um, optional. There are some servers that require you to assign yourself a role before you can actually see everything. I have not done that since this is an optional step. So you'll notice like the Jane Friedman server, I have the same kind of rules set up. I've got a little note about 
hot sheet uh, that's turned into a discussion thread um, and introduce yourself, a daily chat, an off topic, um, discussion of the issues, what I'm reporting on next, and then general industry discussion, which, which has been pretty quiet. So in any event, like I said, it's not like amazing engagement, but the little bit that I've had so far has been super useful to me in thinking about content, what people are looking for, what catches people's attention. So um, as I get better at using Discord, I hope to amplify um, the activity over time. I see that we've got a couple other people um, joining here today. So thank you for giving it a shot. Look, you know, uh, I <laughs> I just clicked in and they think I'm my son, Nikki, because he has an account. I found that that's really common for me. Um, anyone who's my age, who people who tend to have kids who are the right age for Discord, I find a lot that they're like, oh, I've never used this except with my kids. Or I finally understand what my kids are doing uh, now that I've tried it myself. Okay, so let me show you some of the other servers that I belong to. Uh, there's uh, a crypto writers server I joined just because I've, I've been writing and reporting on this lately and I was trying to get a better handle on what's happening. Um, I belong to an indie authors discord, which I find super useful and friendly. In fact, for those who are interested, they have an open invite system. This isn't possible with every server. But this one has an open invite system, so I'll go ahead and put that link into the chat here on Zoom if you'd like to join the Indie Author one. If you're not sure what some of these chat channels are, which, you know, sometimes it can be very, like, nebulous what it's meant for, just look at the top. If you look at the top of the window, you can see the description. So this is talk about the ins and outs and pros and cons of self-publishing. Uh, so just know that if you're kind of getting kind of lost in what these discussions are about, you can click the top for a summary, assuming that the person running the server has bothered to fill in the gaps here for you. Some, sir, uh, some chat channels also have pinned posts or messages. So it's always also worth taking a look at the pinned messages to get your bearings on what's happening in this particular channel, what you might need to know. Um, you notice Trudy here has, uh, says that they have weekly discussions and she's lining out the schedule here about the discussion. Um, so this, I, you know, I, I probably can't recommend this particular Discord server enough because I think it does follow some of the best practices that I am not following and it has really active and engaged conversations. Um, there's also, as I mentioned earlier, Substack Writers Unite. This is for people who are running Substack newsletters, as well as people just running newsletters in general on any platform. This is a super active place. It's hard to keep up with all the conversations. Um, similar to the other one, it's an open invite system. So I'm going to put that link into the chat here if you're interested in what the Substack conversation is. Um, okay, and then I also belong to one called Serial Fiction Fans. It's run by the same person who does Substack Writers Unite. And then Write Hive is one I joined um, just to increase my own Discord IQ. This is run by, um, I think our, a UK writers organization, if I'm not mistaken, or is it US? And then I joined like 20 Discord servers a while back. And so I'm still like sorting through everything I joined and I can't remember them all. Okay. So you'll notice in this one, there is like a patron chat area that's locked and you can't access it. So there are ways to have a Discord community that's open to all, but then has some premium features attached to it where you can have something that's just for people who subscribe or who are patrons or, you know, have done, have jumped some hurdle in order to have that access. Okay. I think I have covered the basics. I didn't, the one thing I didn't show you is all of the server setting stuff, like the back end. I'll just show you that briefly, but when you've, I would not suggest setting up a server as your first step, okay? I'll show it to you briefly, just so you know that it's there. 
but I strongly encourage you to join a few communities first, get comfortable with it if you're new to the technology. And then once you've kind of got the lay of the land, then start your own server, whether or not you have a purpose, you know, just, just to try it out. And so you're going to have to give your server a name. You're going to have to make some decisions about what happens when people join the server. Um, and then you have to decide what roles people will have, how things get moderated, um, how permissive it all is. So there's, there's a lot to sort through here. It's not hard, but it's extensive and it gets really, really detailed. It's much more powerful in terms of its settings and functionality than a Facebook group. So just be prepared for that. It's, it's not going to be, uh, it, it's not going to be as simple. There's, but once you get accustomed to what's possible, um, it, it's definitely manageable. I don't want to intimidate anyone. Just understand there's, there are a lot of settings. <laughs> okay. Um, someone anonymous asks, what is that annoying bouncing Cindy ball, for example? Um, so there are these, um, this actually, this annoys me too, I have to say. Um, one day after I set up the server, Discord started offering these wave to say hi buttons, which then generate these super, I agree, super annoying animated figures. And I cannot figure out for the life of me how to make this not an option for people. Um, maybe there is someone nice listening who will back channel me to tell me how to turn these off because I agree it's, it's not really what I want. Uh, but it's just, it's one of the things about learning a new technology where things happen and you're like, I don't, I don't have the patience right now to figure this one out. So I've been putting off that task. Okay. Uh, Maddie says, uh, the amount of time I sift through threads, trying to find the notifications directed to me makes discord a non-starter for me as a user. So I wonder, Maddie, if running a search would would be helpful. So like I can always see, for instance, um, I can search for mentions of me like this. And then that should bring up all the times that people have mentioned me, new, old, et cetera. And so that maybe that will help you. I mean, I can't, I do, this isn't necessarily the I, most ideal solution in the world, but it would at the very least give you one place you could go repeatedly um, to see what those mentions are and where they're occurring. And you can use this search for anything. It can be for mentions of you, mentions of other people, mentions of something you're interested in. So for instance, let's see if um, any of the servers I belong to are talking about Atticus. No, uh, let's try, well, I know they're talking about Amazon somewhere. Let's try Amazon. Yes, so Amazon links and, and, and so on. Um, let's see, I can't remember if this is a global search. I think this just might be a server specific search. So I would have to go to another server, I believe. Let's go to Indie Authors. I'm gonna type in Atticus. Yeah, now, we've, now we're getting the Atticus mentions um, off of the Indie Authors server like that. Okay, so maybe that will help. Um, but it, it, as I said, this is you would have to do that for each and every server. Okay. I'm just thinking about if there's anything else I want to say about Discord while I have the screen share up. Um, I don't think so. There's a lot more here, obviously, to explore. I've just given you the tip of the iceberg. But, you know, Discord is something that's best used and experienced for yourself. Um, this should, I hope, give you the confidence to get started. All right. So I'm just going to take a look at the, uh, the Q&A. I see Ivy is asking, how do you search various interest groups on this platform by exact name or loose terms? That's a really good question. Um, there is, there are certain websites that try to aggregate um, Discord communities, like offer a listing. 
uh, I'm trying to remember what the big one is. Um, Disboard is, is the name of it. So I'm going to put that into the chat if you want to explore. Uh, again, it's called Disboard, D-I-S-B-O-A-R-D. That's one place you can go searching for Discord communities. Um, but just keep in mind that a, one of the benefits of Discord is that nothing is public until someone makes it public. So there are lots of servers out there that are not making their existence known. It's really word of mouth, or you have to know someone who is involved with it to send you an invite. So, you know, the Trudy Skies post that I mentioned earlier is going to help get you a start. And then once you get into a few of these, or even just one, you can start asking around about, does anyone know of a Discord server devoted to X? Uh, and usually you get lots of responses um, and leads that way. You can also try asking on other social media, like you can put out a tweet or a Facebook post. Um, like if you belong to a face group, uh, a Facebook group right now that's devoted to say querying, you might say, hey, does anyone know of a Discord server that's on this topic too? I'm using it more. I would love to join groups. So you may have to do a little more active digging than you would um, than you would than you would for other social media. Okay, we're just about at the top of the hour. I'm gonna go back to uh, my share screen here for a moment. Um, so I have one more business sermon coming up in 2021. It's on better slide presentations. You can sign up for that uh, right now at my website at the Sunday business sermons page. Um, so that class is gonna be in November and then there's gonna be a winter break and then we'll come back in the new year, um, probably with some new types of programming. Um, so I may, I may have some surprises in store. And then as always, uh, if you would like to see what I've got coming up on the paid side, you can go to my online classes page and find uh, what's rolling out. There are at least uh, five, six, if not more classes still to go before the end of the year. Uh, we've got one on memoir. There's gonna be one on copywriting. Uh, last one of the year will be on submitting to literary magazines and journals. That one's not open for registration yet, but it will be soon. All right. So thank you all for joining me here today. I hope this has opened up your, uh, your mind to using Discord, and I hope that you find useful, helpful, fun people there. So far, that has been my experience. It's been much more pleasant, generally speaking, than other social media. So that's why I felt compelled uh, to do today's talk. I hope to see you there and at a future class. Bye-bye, everyone. <laughs>